It's been two years since Vikings came to an end, but when it comes to fan theories about the show, there seems to be no end to them. In today's video, we're going to discuss whether its main character, the legendary Norse warrior Ragnar Lothbrok, survived his fate in season four or not. Apart from that, we're also going to do a deep dive into what might have become of his body. Let's get into it. First things first, how did he die? Seeing that it's been a while since the show's conclusion, let's begin with a quick recap of how Lothbrook died. You might recall that after getting defeated by his brother Rollo in Paris, Ragnar left Kattegat for some 10 odd years. Upon resurfacing from his life as a recluse, fans saw how he was a changed man. That is, resenting the fact that his best days were behind him, he realized that he had no choice but to take his life, or his death for that matter, into his own hands. And that's what began Ragnar's journey to England. With plans to die on his own terms, once he was in Wessex, he surrendered himself to King Ecbert, who then gave him as a prisoner to King Ale. And we're almost at the end of our recap now, but he tortured him for a few days and finally had him thrown into a pit of venomous snakes, leaving him to die. It was later revealed that this plan not only allowed him to die of his own accord, but also set the stage for his sons to return for terrible vengeance against both of his rivals, immortalizing him as a Viking legend as a result. Speaking of legends, Ragnar appears in traditional Icelandic folklore and is often connected to real-life historical events and figures. There are several versions of his life story and, more importantly, his death. The show, as we've already told you, has opted for at least two of these versions. The illness arc was adapted for faking his death in season three, and the snake pit story was used for his actual death in season four. Moving on, did he really die? That's where the theory comes in. According to a Reddit user's shocking theory, Ragnar survived the snake pit. Yep, you heard that right. Now, instead of racking your mind about how it might have come to pass, sit back and relax, because we're about to reiterate it to the best of our abilities. So, remember Ragnar's 10-year-long disappearance? The user explained that instead of wallowing in self-pity during the self-exile, the warrior was practicing how to survive being bitten by snakes all along. We know it's kind of confusing, but not so much when you consider Yidu's character and her mysterious medicine. Do you buy by any chance recall her giving drugs to Lothbrook after the Siege of Paris? Well, fans have reasons to believe that besides helping him with his pain, they were also making him immune to snake poison. The practice, as some of you might know, is called Mithridatism, and involves gradually self-administering non-lethal amounts of poison to protect oneself against it. Other Redditors added that at some point, she might have replaced the doses with the very creatures themselves. As for getting captured by his rivals, we've already explained how he had thought all of it through, and as for his dead body is concerned, we'll come to it in a while. Hold your horses. First, let's address some of the more important questions that the theory has generated. Up next, where did he go after faking his death? If, even for a minute, we were to believe that the theory holds water, then what did Lothbrook get up to once he escaped the pit? Let's break down some of the possible answers to this question. To begin with, he couldn't have, as some fans believe, gone back to kill his rivals. The show made it quite clear that it was Bjorn and his company that went after them. All right, understandable but what about Lagatha? Yeah, no. The way she struggled to come to terms with his death, it's doubtful that he paid her or Kattegat a visit. As for Yidu is concerned, he killed her in a fit of rage, and unless she came from the dead as well, there's no way he could have gone back to her. Basically, even if he lived, he had nobody to go back to. This only means one thing. After escaping the pit, he returned to the same solitary life that he had during his 10-year exile. Also, did any of this happen to the real Ragnar? Another question that came to people's minds after Ragnar's harrowing death was if any of this was historically accurate. The answer to this question isn't as straightforward as you might think, because, and as we've already pointed out, despite borrowing characters and events from history, the show's had to take several creative liberties for several reasons. Simply put, Ragnar wasn't real. He's, in fact, three different historical figures, namely Viking leader Rega Harris, King Horik I of Denmark, who was included in the series, and King Regenfried, superimposed as a fictional character. As a result, Ragnar's story varies, even in the Icelandic sagas that he appears in. That being said, apart from the version, i.e. the Snake Pit one, that was adapted for the series depending on the historical figure, he could have died in the following few ways. Either he could have been murdered like Regenhuris, killed in battle like Horik, or in an attempted invasion like Regenfried. Then there's the illness story we referred to before as well. Alrighty, it's finally time to 
talk about his dead body. Brace yourselves. Coming up, here's what happened to his body. If there's one thing about the Vikings that everybody knows, it's that they had some really grand funerals. For those of you who failed history class, they involved sending the body off on a full-blown boat or ship. The said vessel also contained offerings according to the deceased's status and profession. Vikings featured several such burials, but Ragnar's wasn't one of them. Of course, there's the fact that he died away from home, but it's still strange because as fans point out, his sons would have reclaimed his body no matter what. Now, we don't know what the wider fandom thinks, but in our opinion, here's why they didn't, or rather couldn't, retrieve his body. One possible explanation, for instance, is that the snakes ate it. This is highly likely because the body was left there for a long time. Another possibility is that it decomposed. Finally, we have a feeling that the Saxons took it, and they of course would have left it somewhere instead of giving it to a proper Viking burial. Whatever may be the case, it would have been nice to see a nice Viking funeral for the character. Alas. Now that Ragnar's survival theory is out of the way, let's check out a few more theories about the show. Next up, as weird as it sounds, fans think that Floki was a god. We all remember Floki as the most amusing, although strange character on the show. You might recall how he was either always playing tricks or trying to devise intricate plans to defeat his enemies. And because of this behavior, fans would often compare him to Loki. Let's clarify that we mean the Norse god of mischief here, not Marvel's anti-hero. Besides the characters scheming his religiosity, which he deemed a factual ideology that defined his reality, was also interpreted as a sign that he was either a god or a demigod. Fans argued that only someone with some greater knowledge about the god's world would have his level of commitment to them. Another interesting thing to note here is that the theory may have stemmed from all the overt connections that the show made between the two. For instance, he and his wife, Helga, named their daughter Angerboda. Those of you who know their Norse mythology might well remember that's it's the name of Loki's former wife. Then the scene in the cave where Helga holds a bowl over his head to stop the water from dripping on his face was also a direct reference to Loki's imprisonment by Odin. Finally, the mysterious reappearance in the last season, that too after being presumed dead, also indicates that he possesses divine power of some sort. Sadly for us, especially now that the series has ended, the theory can't be proven or disproven. Regardless of that, it was one of the neatest things that the show's fans have ever come up with so far. What's more, Floki's mental condition. One more highly believable theory about Floki was that in place of being a god, he was actually experiencing delusions. Simply put, he had schizophrenia. With this theory in mind, his religious beliefs don't seem a result of divine powers. Instead, there's something that's only working to make his condition worse. Don't come for us, but this theory makes more sense than the one of him being Loki. Last but not least, theories about Harbard's character. Harbard was another character who inspired a plethora of fan theories. Since he was so mysterious, fans presumed that, much like Floki, he was either a god or a demigod. Owing to this belief, they're still convinced that come to some Valhalla episode and they'll get to see him again. Yeah, we hope so too. He was one of the creepiest characters on the show that had no dearth of creepy characters. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think the theory holds water? Which other Vikings theories would you like us to discuss? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.